One does not simply walk into Mordor. The land of shadow. Welcome everyone. In this shadow cast, we are traveling deep into the land of Mordor, to the very seat of power, high atop the tower of Barad-dûr. In today's video, I'll take you along with me as we explore the veiled secrets and hidden mysteries of the dark tower of Mordor. From its deepest dungeons to the great well of the eye, high atop the plain of Golgoroth. So, strap on that orc armor, slip into a pair of iron shod shoes, and take a swig of that fiery orc draught as we travel from the very feet of Mount Doom to the Iron Bridge of Barad-dûr. In today's shadow cast, we will examine the Dark Tower through both the Tolkien canon and the expanded legendarium of Middle-earth, as we explore the vast fortress of Barad-dûr. The Dark Tower was built in the land of Mordor, upon a mountain spur that jutted out from the Ash Mountains into the plain of Golgoroth. The name Barad-dûr means Dark Tower in Sindrin, from Barad meaning fortress or tower, and Dûr meaning dark. In the Black Speech, the Dark Tower is rendered as Lugburs. Many may know this, but few consider the fact that there were two distinct towers built in the Land of Shadow. The first building of Barad-dûr began in the first century of the second millennium of the Second Age. For 600 years, the slaves of the Dark Lord toiled under the whips of their orc overseers, building Barad-dûr. In the year 1600, Second Age, the One Ring was forged and the building of the Dark Tower was completed. Little is known about this first tower, because none now live who remember it. The Dark Tower of Barad-dûr reigned as the center of power in Mordor for roughly 1,700 years. However, in 3430 of the Second Age, the last alliance of men and elves marched on Mordor. During the Battle of the Daggerlad, Sauron was driven back into Mordor, and for six years the Dark Tower lay under a siege. In 3441, Sauron came forth and drove the last army of men and elves to the very feet of Mount Doom. Elendil and Gilgalad perished. Isildur cut the ring from the hand of the Dark Lord, and Sauron was vanquished. The remaining armies of the Alliance brought down the tower, but were unable to destroy its foundations. So ends the Second Age of Middle-earth. The second building of Barad-dûr began in the year 2951 of the Third Age. In that year, Sauron declared himself openly and gathered all evil creatures unto Mordor. This time, built upon its original foundation, the tower went up in less than 70 years. The exact time it took to rebuild is not known, but later in this shadow cast, I'll discuss my theories on how it was possible to build the fortress so quickly. This second tower of Barad-dûr endured only a few years. While the eye of Sauron looked elsewhere, two small halflings crept into Mordor, making their way to the very feet of Mount Doom. They entered Samoth Noir, 
from the east, and the one ring of power was cast back into the fiery chasm from whence it came. Sauron was utterly destroyed, as were all his works. The vast tower of Baradur fell, mountains slid, walls crumbled, and its ruin exploded out across the land. The reign of Sauron was ended forever. Very little is known about the two towers of Baradur. Sauron wove about himself a shadow and a veiling darkness. No descriptions of the first tower have survived through the ages of Middle-earth. However, there is one recorded account of the second dark tower in the Red Book of Westmarch. Fire glowed amid the smoke. Mount Doom was burning and a great reek rising. Then at last his gaze was held. Wall upon wall, battlement upon battlement, black, immeasurably strong, mountain of iron, gate of steel, tower of adamant. He saw it, Baradur, fortress of Sauron. All hope left him. Beautiful in its prose, but vague in its details. Little else do we have to go on in the Tolkien canon. However, the Tolkien legendarium is rich in its illustration of the second building of Baradur. We here in Mordor believe the first building of Baradur took 600 years because it was constructed mainly of stone and mortar, which would have limited it in size and scope. We know there was a stone bridge, a great gate, and that it rose high above the plain of Golgoroth. However, what lay at its top is only a guess. Some believe there was a high window that looked out east, west, north, and south. But little else is known or even guessed at. The second dark tower was in many ways a rival of the first. Baradur was besieged for six years in the Second Age, and Sauron had learned much about how to fortify his new stronghold. The second dark tower was built of iron, steel, and stone. A vast trench was dug along Sauron's road. An endless river of molten fire flowed from the feet of Mount Doom to the ring of fire that surrounded the dark tower. The only entrance into Baradur was across a black iron bridge that could be defended against any who dared assail the stronghold of Sauron. This trench, the Noir Trench, fed the forges of Baradur, where thousands of spiked plates of steel and iron were made to build the dark tower. These smithies also made the massive black gate, the armor of the orcs, and fashioned the mighty battering ram, Grand. In many ways, Baradur was a great city in its own right. There were deep dungeons, vast treasuries, endless armories, great halls, and a throne room to rival all the king's chambers of Middle-earth. Built upon its original foundations, this fortress of adamant was constructed from the will of Sauron and stood only as long as he that made it survived. It is said to have stood over 1,000 feet above the plain of Gorgoroth, and its summit was the Well of the Eye, where the spirit of Sauron gazed out upon Middle-earth, a great eye, lidless and wreathed in flame.
The power of the Dark Lord had grown by the end of the Third Age. Even without the One Ring, Sauron had grown powerful. Sauron used the raw fire of Mount Doom to fuel this new power. It is said there was a chamber of fire beneath the Well of the Eye, and that Sauron, through the power of dark sorcery, was able to draw up fire from the central core of the tower to manifest his will in the form of a great eye. His gaze pierced cloud, shadow, earth, and flesh. The dark tower of Mordor was the spirit of Sauron manifest. His cruelty, malice, and the will to dominate all life in Middle-earth was embodied in the terrible countenance of Baradu, the Dark Tower. I hope you enjoyed this video as we explored the Dark Tower of Mordor. From its deepest dungeons to the very summit of power high atop the plain of Gorgoroth. I think I'm going to let the next video, our next shadow cast, be a surprise. But I hope you'll continue this journey with me as we travel together through the land of shadow.